This is New England Cable News. A Boston priest accused of child abuse is defrocked, and tonight, words of praise from critics of the Boston Archdiocese. Good evening, everyone. I'm Tom Ellis. Here's our news tonight. The decision to strip a Boston reverend of his priestly duties is being called drastic and unprecedented. And tonight, some of Bernard Cardinal Law's harshest critics are praising this news that he has defrocked Father John Gagan. Gagan is accused of molesting dozens of children over two decades. And New England Cable News reporter Greg Whalen has more. Bless this boat, its equipment, and all who would use it. For the Cardinal, the day of sudden rain had been reserved for blessing Boston's fleet, including the USS Constitution. But he would also face questions about his action defrocking or laicizing Reverend John Gagan. An action of this kind uh, means that a person may not uh, publicly act as a priest, uh, is not a priest, may not present himself as a priest, and uh, that has obvious consequences. Gagan's defrocking took a year and needed Vatican approval. Victims of sex offender and priest James Porter tried but failed to get him laicized. Rod McLeish represented some of those victims. We've had some major league pedophiles uh, who have been priests in the past where there have been requests for laicization for defrocking and it's not occurred. This is the first time it's happened and I think that the Archdiocese again deserves some credit for going farther than a lot of the other dioceses in the country have done by taking this action. To those who criticize the church in this uh, through this ordeal and say that it's trying to buy the silence of victims and is trying to make the scandal go away as quickly as possible and are treating it as a public relations problem. How do you respond to them? I, I think the action of uh, the church and the archdiocese specifically speak for themselves. Uh, we uh, are in this for the long haul in terms of dealing with this problem and we've tried to deal with it uh, forthrightly and clear. Phil Salviano represents a network of victims, or as he calls them, survivors of priestly sex abuse. For survivors, what we've been looking for is, is a sort of a, a concrete action that goes beyond, say, prayers or healing masses. And uh, I think this is, a, is really a, a significant step on the part of the Cardinal. I feel terribly that any priest should ever violate the trust that is placed in him by virtue of his ordination. There are criminal cases still pending against Gagan, and McLeish says the defrocking has its downside. The church feels it's better to keep people within the church community so they can keep an eye on them. Once they're laicized, once they're defrocked, the church has no authority, legal or moral, over the priests. But for the cardinal, moving between ancient and modern ships on a rainy day, it was a calm moment on a sea of controversy. Greg Wayland, New England Cable News. In 84 minutes, 94 live. Covering your world for 50 years, this is WBZ4. Now, News for New England. Good evening, I'm Jack Williams, and here's what's happening tonight. Some of the victims of the Reverend John Gagan are speaking out after Gagan was defrocked as a Catholic priest. The Boston Archdiocese took the extraordinary step against the priest accused of molesting children. News Force Peg Rasconi asked some victims whether the punishment fits the crime. In the 1960s, John Sacco was an altar boy at Blessed Sacrament Church in Saugus. He claims he was molested by a priest, John Gagan. You know, we were doing a lot of yelling and screaming, or at least I was, and uh, nobody was really listening. And so this does substantiate it in a way. Sacco is referring to Cardinal Bernard Law's decision to defrock Gagan, a punishment that is believed to be unprecedented in the Boston Archdiocese. Uh, in this instance, uh, already, Father was not able to, to function as a priest because of uh, having been suspended from those public priestly duties. This is a much more definitive action. It's, uh, it's a, it is out of the ordinary. The punishment means Gagan can no longer present himself as a priest. Gagan is alleged to have molested children over a span of three decades in a number of parishes. It's been reported the church has settled costly lawsuits brought by Gagan's victims. And I don't want in any way to prejudice a legal process, but um, I felt clearly that it would be in the best interests of the church, in the best interests of society, and in the best interests of the individual, uh, if this action could be taken. So... Phil Saviano was abused by a different priest. He oh, runs a support God. group for victims. 
For survivors, you know, we've been looking for some sort of concrete action, something that goes beyond sort of vague apologies or prayers or healing masses. Um, and this is, I think, the, the first thing that the Cardinal has done that we really feel is a step in the right direction. There are some who feel the Cardinal's actions amount to too little too late. To them, Law says he's doing the best he can. We were unable to reach Gagan for comment. WHDHTV Boston. This is 7 News at 11 on the news station. Good evening. A local Catholic priest accused of molesting children is kicked out of the priesthood. His name is Father John Gagan, and he has officially been defrocked. The order came from the Pope and from Boston's Cardinal Law. The Gagan is the first priest ever defrocked in the Boston Archdiocese. But as the night team's Garvin Thomas tells us now, some alleged victims say it's not punishment enough. John Gagan has been laicized. Laicized is the church's word for it. Defrocked another. The man accused of molesting as many as 50 little boys over the last 30 years is no longer a priest. He may not function as a priest. He may not appear as a priest. He, on the face of this earth, he will not be known or act as a priest. Over the last few months now, the Boston Diocese has been settling lawsuits connected with Gagan. Some estimates go as high as millions of dollars. That takes care of legal responsibility. This was an attempt to take care of the rest. I hope that this act uh, can bring some peace to some. Uh, I believe that it uh, certainly is a clear sign that, um, uh, that, that there is no possibility of any kind of um, a violation of trust. I'm hoping that this will be the beginning of a shift in attitudes across the country. Phil Saviano heads a support group for victims of abuse by priests. I think this is a very important, perhaps symbolic, uh, step because it's never happened in the history of this archdiocese that a priest has been essentially booted out of the organization. It may be a step, but as one of Gagan's alleged victims, Jim Sacco wants justice. The first step, next step is to, uh, you know, have the guy arrested, put away, and that's, then it will be justice. Gagan was defrocked by act of Pope John Paul II. The church did have another option to take it to a church court, but Cardinal Law says that would have opened the door for an appeal and taken longer. Meantime, the district attorney is considering criminal charges against Gagan. I'm Garvin Thomas, 7 News 19 has been defrocked by the Boston Archdiocese. Father John Gagan will no longer be able to perform any priestly functions. It is an unprecedented action taken by the Archdiocese, an action that was sanctioned by the Pope. New Center 5's Anne Dufresne reports. He never threatened me, but he did tell me that he had my parents' permission to uh, teach me about certain uh, sexual things. He doesn't want his face shown today, but this man has already come forward in the past to reveal his painful experiences as an altar boy at the Blessed Sacrament in Saugus. One of more than 40 people from various Boston area parishes to accuse Gagan of raping and molesting them as children. This week, the Archdiocese settled civil suits filed by a number of the victims, paying out millions of dollars. Now, Cardinal Bernard Law says the church will no longer harbor the retired priest, stripping him of his duties and forcing him out of the church's retirement home. The priest, by his very nature, invokes trust. And um, if there is uh, a reasonable sense that that, that trust could easily be violated, then it's best that that person not be present in the public in that way. You could say it's 20 years too late. It's still a very important step, and it's never happened in this archdiocese before. No priest has ever been defrocked, so I think this is significant. Phil Saviano, who heads a group of abuse survivors, hopes the action taken against Gagan will send a clear message to other archdioceses dealing with abusive priests. And while many of Gagan's victims say it's an important first step, it doesn't close the book on their pain. Now that he's Mr. Gagan, um, that uh, since he is an accused pedophile, he really should be watched. I would hope that he's not allowed to roam the streets and do the things that he um, has done over the last 30 years. What that survivor says he needs is a public apology from Gagan, one that could come from a criminal trial. The Suffolk County District Attorney is still investigating the possibility of indicting Gagan on criminal sexual abuse charges. In the newsroom, I'm Andrew Frayne, News Center 5 tonight.